this video we're going to be breaking down Kobo and Astro. This is in the Madden Bowl. Two really good Madden players, really good young Madden players. Uh, and a lot we can learn in this video. Now, for uh, for the schematics and everything we want to talk about here, we're going to be seeing Colts on offense for Astro. I believe probably Chiefs on defense for Astro. And then Kobo is going to be in probably Chiefs on defense. And then on offense, Kobo is actually in run and gun. So Kobo is going to be running trips tight end. Kobo, by far the most unique offensive player at the Madden Bowl, in my opinion. And really kind of put the put the blueprint for running trips this year. Astro, in my opinion, is one of the best offensive Madden players in the game. He's actually rocking 49ers defensive playbook. I'm not sure why he's doing that. I think it has dollar six one. It might have another supplemental formation. I want to say it has nickel wide nine uh, if he wants to do that. He loves these lurk artist abilities. You're going to see that on his defensive line. He's going to be creeping on defensive linemen a lot. Really, really, really good. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. His first drive on offense. And as I said, he is probably widely considered to be the best, the best offensive player in the world, at least in at least one of them every single year. Now, Kobo, uh, we'll get into it next play, but he's running. Kobo is going to be basing out of the, the spinner blitz. Now, again, the way these comp Madden players play, and this is something really important we talk about and teach about is they have a system. Everything is systematic. Everything is if this, then that equations. And so what you're going to see, and you see it really right here. Let me uh, back this up, or let me let me go back to that alignment so we can see kind of what we have here. Let me see if he motions us, this receiver. Okay, right here. Perfect. We can see this. So the system that Kobo is running defensively is a spinner. He's, he's basing out of spinner. Okay? What spinner is going to do is spinner is going to allow him to utilize this adjustment against bunch, which is this guy is normally in man-to-man -man coverage, right? So if you know what a spinner is, Spinner basically looks like this at the pre-play menu, and it has both of these guys blitzing in. Now, what Kobo is going to do more times than not is he is going to do this right here, and then this guy is his user, which leaves these, these uh, back four plus this slot corner uh, to essentially adjust out of. So if you think about it, really, this guy oftentimes is going to be blitzing. He might not always blitz, but he's, he's oftentimes going to blitz. And then what you're going to see is this guy is the user. So why run this defense? A couple reasons. Number one, the blitz is really good from it, which is the centerpiece of any defensive system that you want to run. It doesn't matter what year of Madden, your defense has to be able to get pressure on the quarterback. Now, that could be in the form of a blitz. It could be in the form of a shed defense. But in general, for the last 10, 15 years, as long as I've been teaching and playing Madden, a blitz defense is the hallmark of any good defense. And there's only one or two years that I can even think of where it wasn't a sin four or a sin five pressure system. Typically, the blitzes are going to be a sin four or a sin five pressure. And then you're going to adjust in behind that and you're going to mix in some coverage calls. So let's go back to Spinner here for just a second. Now, Astro's in Colts bunch and you're going to see a lot of double posts. He loves that play. He runs that a lot, actually. But uh, Kobo is in the spinner blitz. So the other thing that he has is he has this alignment right here, which a typical base alignment will put this corner kind of out in here on the outside. Because he's in default alignment, you're going to see that this guy is typically actually technically manned up to this solar receiver. What Astro is going to, or what Kobo is going to do a lot is he is going to put him in a third and he's going to turn his match on. He's, it's a matched third, okay? He's going to be using that, and that is going to do a really good job of defending this guy and kind of X him out. So then we turn our attention over here to the left side where Kobo can do a lot of different adjustments really with kind of these, these you know, mainstay players. Really, these four are who he's going to use to take away these three, okay? So that's kind of in general what you're going to see uh, schematically. Let's go ahead and see what Astro goes to. So you see here, he actually runs a cover two here on the right side. Now, I'm pretty sure that Kobo is going to be rocking the safeties package out of out of dollar. He, he might not, but this was something that was really popular about October and really has kind of made a comeback because of mid-zone KO. Mid-zone KO has made it so that it actually, maybe he's not using the safeties because Astro actually hit that throw to the right there which is a really good read against a deep half. Okay, so he audibles to trips. So real quick, why audible to trips? I want to break this down for us. 
So he audibles to trips. What does this do to Kobo's defense? It's going to move this guy over here, okay? This is the biggest kryptonite of the spinner blitz and the spinner defense in general is its alignment, especially against a trip style set. So now what we have here, especially if this running back was over here, you only you you basically have a two on two matchup because we know this guy is going to be blitzing generally speaking, and then if you're going to blitz this guy, you only have one player to defend two routes. That's the reason why this audible is very popular if you want to run spinner. So if you're running Colts playbook, this is a great little tip to go to your trip sets when you're playing something like this. So you see here, actually gets a really nice screamer out of the four man, and Astro is going to face the second and ten. So you see here again, spinner on that right side, really, really important. User is pretty much always here. Now, there's a couple things he's not doing that is kind of interesting. I want to watch this slot. So he sends four with that slot off the right. And to me, I don't understand why the, the interesting thing about spinner to me is the both slots. You'll see a lot of people blitz both slots out of it. So you see here again, sends four off that right side, really no pressure whatsoever has this over the top and potentially a, a dot. And now we have kind of a got to have it down. This is a fourth and one. These are where you learn the most in these film rooms. What do you call in your got to have it downs? What do you call in your fourth and two, your third and fives? What are your money plays for this situation? Astro goes to speed dig. Was that speed dig or vertical? Is that was an interesting play call there. Let's take a look at the adjustment. So you see here again, we get that match third. He actually blocks his tight end. It looks like that's probably the vertical's wheel. And so, and then we have a little running back Texas and a post, right? So essentially, what is Astro going to? A Madden staple. You've got a little flat and then a wheel. What that's going to do is it's going to pull the flat defender, but it's also going to pull this vertical defender because it wheels up. You have a post route or a crosser, and then you have a running back underneath it. So where is the user, where is the user going to go, right? The user has to, in this case, either use the running back or the post, and Astro is going to choose the other player. Pretty much here, we got a shaded down yellow. We got a press third. We got a hard flat and a half. And then we're sending one, two, three, four, five at the quarterback. Okay? So here we go. And running back is open. He is getting screamed at as he's getting it. So it's got to be a good throw and gets a perfect accuracy blue pass. Shout out to David T. And... There it is. All right, first and 10. Ball on about the 24. This is where you start to see some red zone stuff, potentially. You're going to go with the night. Again, there's that audible to trips I was talking about. There's a C route right there. Missed it. Throws it away, probably. Yep. And it's going to be second and 10. There's the beast named John. Uh, kind of a, I'm pretty sure they la hit him and Astro are pretty good buddies. And they, uh, both of them, in my opinion, are, they're both two of the best offensive players in the world. Maybe the best offensive players in the world. I would say... Between Astro and John B's, one of them is pretty much always the, the best offensive player in the world. Okay, this is really important. So what do we get here? He's in, he's in trips. Why does he audible to trips? Well, because it takes this corner, who's normally over here, and it moves him over here. Why? Because Kobo is in a man-based defense, a man alignment. The only way to solve that would be to base the line, which Kobo is not going to do. So what does that do? In terms of our options, it really puts us tight in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So what you see is you're going to get a blitz, 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 blitz. If this guy is in man coverage on the tight end, he's got a chance to beat him to the corner. If this safety is in a deep half and you run a crosser, the deep half will cut the crosser and it will leave this corner open more to the sideline. So that's kind of what you see here. And as we go, it's actually just a simple man coverage here to the left. This guy blitzes, blitzes. He is getting screamed at here, but able to make a good read out of a heavy pressure situation. And as you see, the tight end is going to be open and going to be a touchdown. So to recap, kind of first drive, just a couple things. Number one, Kobo is number one, Kobo is basing out of spinner. Why is he basing out of spinner? Not 100% sure, but in general, we could probably assume that one of the reasons he wants to base out of spinner is so that he can use a pressed third and use his match coverage to be able to play really, really good defense in certain situations against Astro. A couple things Astro is going to be able to do throughout this game, especially because he's in Colts, he can go to bunch strong nasty, which is going to make that pressed third a little bit less, uh, less effective. 
He can go to these trips tight end audibles and hit and be able to manipulate the man alignment of the defense in general. So those are a couple keys early. And here we see now, even though his favorite playbook is the Bills, I'm pretty sure he's in running gun for this tournament. And then he's using the Patriots playbook. Really? Is he? No way. He's not using it. He's not, this is this might be wrong. <laughs> um, it might be his favorite playbook, but I'm pretty sure he's not using Patriots because Patriots doesn't have dollar. Favorite Madden men, 17. A lot of people say this was probably the most competitive Madden ever. And Skimbo won a ton in that year. So just goes to show how good Skimbo really is. As good of a player he is to learn from him. And Anyway, so Kobo's going to be in trip side in. Astro should be in 6-1, I believe. So we're going to learn some stuff about 6-1 in this, in this film room. And then Kobo's going to be in trip. So if you guys are trip, I love trips. Hard not to like trips. And he's going to audible to this halfback zone. A little bunch tied in. This is a really good run play here. And Jurtles. And, oh, that's kind of interesting. So you got Dre Archer. So for your Mutt, my Mutt guys, theme team-wise, Kobo, I believe, is probably in Ghosts of Mutt theme team. Astro, I would assume, is probably in... Actually, looks kind of similar. Might be a Ghost of Mutt playoff theme team. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, trip side in. Here we go. Wide, okay, so right off rip, let's go over this real quick. couple things that we got to do prerequisite. So what's 6-1? What's if you think about the defense of 6-1, what is the general principle of 6-1? It's either A, we're going to blitz 6, okay? Or B, we're going to blitz 3 or 4. If we blitz 3 or 4, who are they going to be? It's going to be this guy, these four here, okay? So what does that mean for our coverage? Typically, this guy is going to be in a low flat, a low flat. Why? Because of where they're aligned, they can't really get back anywhere. So the only people on the field that can defend deep passes is really these back four, kind of similar to dollar, okay? So what are these back four going to be in? Well, typically, this guy's going to be in a cloud. This guy's going to be in a cloud. This guy is going to be in half. This guy's going to be in half. And then we're going to have these kind of underneath flats. So what is now open based off of those things that I just explained? The user's responsibility is this entire middle of the field. Another thing that is important, and this is what Kobo is going to do early, he's going to do this secret motion. I've talked about it before. When you motion this receiver to the right, he will go all the way over here. If you motion him to the trip side, so I'm actually putting him in motion to the left, he'll go to this kind of secret little uh, little spot here. So what Kobo is going to do is he's, he's trying to manipulate this defender who's in a half zone. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to streak our tight end. So the deep half has to take that. And this is going to be kind of a fade. And we're going to try to hit this over the top if Astro's in cover two. That's kind of the main principles that we're seeing here at play in the first down. And then, and then if that's not open, we have this little high low on the back end. Now, why would this high-low be a good high-low? Well, because if because what we're anticipating here is this guy to be on a third or a third if they're not double mabling, which would make this comeback wide open. Another reason we're using this ghost route is because chances are there's not going to be a hook curl defender here to the right side. So those are some reasons as to the logic behind the, the route combo. Okay. So we'll just snap it here and look at what Astro does. He decides we're going to send six. Now, I want to back up and say one more thing, and then we'll kind of let this play go through. The alignment of these defensive linemen tell you a lot about what they're doing defensively. It was true for John Beast. It's true for Astro as well. If these defensive linemen are spread out, typically you're going to see a six-man pressure. If these defensive linemen are in like let's say the defensive linemen are more so inside pinched, that's where you're going to get most of your coverage calls. It's interesting to me that this is a pretty basic tell and uh, kind of interesting to see how people attack it. So you see Kobo takes his little zig. It's one of his best plays of the year is really this zig route, and you'll see him go to it in key situations. All right, third and three, ball in about 32-yard line. This thing got to have it down. Again, take a look at the alignment here. And it looks like a little bit more pinched in than they were previously. So chances are, actually, no, we're going to send some pressure. Goes with a little out route. And uh, you're going to see Kobo stretch horizontally a lot. 
He's going to try to throw horizontally, these little quick, quick reads. So I guess this is actually, this is technically the spread line. So you're going to see a lot of Sin 6 here. You see here again, Sin 6. And really interesting route combo right there. But basically has a high low. It's kind of cope. This is kind of actually, this is kind of Kobo's version of double corner. I don't know if you guys caught this. It's kind of an interesting route combo. But basically we have a clear out streak. We have a deep corner that's going to go about 30 yards, 30, 40 yards. And then on this solo receiver, we're going to use a little comeback route that's going to be about a 15-yard depth and end up kind of painting the sideline as if it's double corner. It's really kind of a unique uh, combo there from Kobo. And let's see what we go to next. So, again, let's take a look at the D-line. Now, Astro is, is pretty much spreading... And he actually leaves them spread and goes covered. So that's a little difference from him than John Beast. John Beast, for the most part, if he pinched his D-line, it was a shed D. And if he didn't pinch, it was it was he was sending them. So Astro, a little bit of a unique difference here. Sliding this guy out to get him a little bit more outside leveraged. Second and four. Motion this over again. Little rollout play, trying to hit that tight end. And he's able to hit him, and that's a good touchdown. So Astro gets a little aggressive, trying to trust that 30-yard cloud, and uh, Kobo able to paint the corner again. And notice that these pros, a lot of their, their passing strategy is really to try to attack the sideline. Why are they trying to attack the sideline? They're trying to attack the sideline because it's where the user is not, right? It's where the user is not, making it it's, it's much easier to play against the computer than it is to play against the user. So you see here again, and gets kind of kind of bagged and we're about to wrap up the first quarter second and six situation again we got this blitz threat here probably and here it looks like he backs this guy up so this is probably a tell this is probably cover two actually just a basic man up and this is a crazy pick this is actually a great read from astro we have a cross man on r1 i think he just gets a he gets bumped here but he also underthrows the ball he just underthrows the ball and terrible, terrible because that's huge. That's a huge pick. And now Kobo's in field position and Kobo gets balled half. So if I'm Kobo right here, you know, you're thinking, okay, you know, basically we're up a stop now. Let's not waste it. And then got some underneath check downs, looking at that cross concept, able to hit that high low to the right side. But again, Astro literally just missed his wide open streak. And Kobo gets seven right out of the gate. And now he's basically on Astro's neck at this point. And this is this is kind of a gotta have it drive from Astro. And it's crazy how quickly the game shifts because really the streak that Astro threw was open. It was an open read. It was a good read. And he just made a bad pass lead, in my opinion, because he underthrew it by so much that the, the slot receiver actually caught up to it. That's a real tough read. Good read. Able to go to double post there. Now we're going to see, because this is a got to have it down. So you're going to see a lot of different, you're going to see his best stuff on this drive. So there's mesh spot. This is the Wesley wheel out, roll out play to the right. Really not. Is he going to paint that corner? That's a beautiful pass. That's so good. So, okay, what do we get there? We got a, we got a wide side bunch, and we used a running back wheel to pull the third and quarter. Able to hit that. One of the best plays in the game this year is that play. Little double post. Throws another pick. Mm. One of the things that Astro does, and, and I, like I said, I, I think he's one of the best, most innovative offensive players in the world. Sometimes he just throws picks like this. He just really, um, he, he puts stuff, he, he throws balls and windows that most people just wouldn't try to throw. And and every now and then it bites him, and you're seeing that in this, in this game. All right, so Kobo takes back over. With the ball up a stop and getting ball at half. So really, if I'm Kobo here, you're just in a great situation. You know, you can literally just milk the clock. You have Omaha. And what I don't understand is this this play call to me is kind of interesting. I'm trying to figure out what he's trying to do here. Throws that, gets a throw to sack. That's terrible. So I'm trying to figure out why. To me, this is just I don't know. I don't know. So Kobo has Omaha. He goes to this. He's trying to basically get the streak open or the post open. And you get the one problem with trips 
in my opinion, is the bumping can be an issue. So you see right here, what happens is this guy actually matches to this post and it's going to leave this big void to try and go for a touchdown. So Kobo is about, he's throwing that, but as he's throwing that, CJ Stroud's release, he gets such a big windup. And as he gets hit as he throws, any kind of miss pass leads it a little bit and gets a throw out of sack pick. So that's a, to me, it was just like, I don't know that he needed to go for a bomb right there because if he just milks out the rest of the clock, I honestly think that puts him in a little bit better of a position, but is what it is. So now Astro kind of gets a, gets a mulligan, if you will. And, and now we're in a, we're kind of back into a tight game. And really, all Astro has to do is score before the end of half. And it really does put Kobo or put him back in the game. So here, a little basic set up a double post. And I want to go over this just real quick to talk, touch on this. Kobo was one of the only players in the tournament doing this. And it's a defense I think people should run more. So it's spinner, right? But what we're doing is we have the safeties package on. So we're going to go uh, solo wide receiver on a third. This basically cancels this guy out. Really good adjustment. Then what we have here is we have a middle third. We have an outside third. Now, because this guy has deep out zone KO, maybe has mid zone KO, probably just deep out. The way the movement works in this game, you can actually click on him and, and really take away some of these corner routes. What this also allows him to do is this defender to be on a cloud flat. So he'll be able to take away that short corner and then on the double corner, for example, this outside third would take this and be able to still kind of hold that before that guy gets there. So it's a really, really good defense. It's the roll cover three. We teach it in our Patreon and our dollar ebook. If you guys haven't gotten that, it's really the it's really just a great library. The Patreon is my complete library of Madden knowledge. It's everything that I know about the game. It gets you access to all of our ebooks, all of our updates, everything for just ten dollars. And uh, the cool part about it, like I said, is it just up it continually updates. And you you get like by the end of the year, there's just this entire library of content that uh, that will make you a better Madden player. So it's a great time to become a member. It's only ten dollars, and like I said, I guarantee it'll make you a better Madden player. So here you see this little movement inside. That means this is, but see, see, there's the cloud flap. Here he actually beats the press. And I'm not sure why he beats the press here to the left side. I feel like Kobo actually played straight man. Ends up beating the press. The thing about Astro that is really interesting is his reads are so good and he he never misses a, he never misses a streak. They even said this in the broad, broadcast. He literally almost never misses it. And he just always is looking for his big play. So anyway, here we see this is one of his favorite plays out of trips, the C route, C route's open. We're not going to throw it. We're just going to run it up. Now, potentially, and he actually goes down and down and bounce there. Potentially, the purpose of that was just to try to milk the clock off a little bit more and really just try to kind of take advantage of the situation and try to get in the half tied after really playing a pretty bad first half. Here's spinner, man coverage. And you're seeing this man coverage actually play bunch pretty well. I mean, he's got an interception on this base. That was just basic spinner. Every now and then, Kobo will just, just send them, send everybody, basically. Here, a little bunch strong. Motions out the post. Hits the tight end. Check down. Juke. Almost a peanut punch. Now, we're kind of in a tough situation. Astro probably ideally would have liked to take that to half, but it was... Ends up kind of getting down the field almost too quickly. So now he just needs to score. Kobo is going to get the chance to go down and get points, but we're going to see him try to score here, maybe try to take the timeouts. So there's a run. Kobo not going to take a timeout there, probably just because he forced him to be in a passing situation. So now what you should see, yep, a pass. Wheel route. And get shedded. All right, third and 22. So this is like, I mean, this is a key, key down because really Astro needs seven. Because of the fact that Kobo gets the ball at half, because of the fact that Kobo's going to get the ball after this possession, you really need seven here. So let's see what he ends up calling. And he is going to go to, let's see, motion out, running back, C route. So this is double post. Checks to the tight end. Jurtles upfield, fourth and 13. 
Now kind of decision time. Looks like he is going to go ahead and take his three, just try to stay alive in the game. And Kobo has really just dominated this first half and really put on a really put on a clinic for defending, playing defense against Colts Bunch. We'll have to look at this game a little closer as well, kind of analyze some of his defensive drives. I feel like the only thing Kobo hasn't done well is offense. And his offense hasn't been bad, but just missed a couple throws. 14 to 10, though, and with ball at half and ball right here. So we'll see what he does. Goes a little motion in, corner out. A lot of these trips guys love this motion in play. Ends up throwing it away. Astro honestly hasn't played bad defense, though. I would say Astro has not played bad defense either. So it's kind of been a – it's really just been a story of how good Kobo's defense has been for him this game. Honestly. You can go a little high-low here, a little drag route. Nice read. And Kobo just does such a good job of this throughout his throughout his Madden 24 season is he really just does a good job of just dinking and dunking and just taking the underneath and spacing the field really well. Actually, audibles here to gun doubles. We never see this. Literally never see this. A little high-low to the left side. This is a clinic if you want to run spread, too. I mean, if you want to run, like, more spread-out sets like doubles and trips, there's a lot you can learn from watching Kobo play. Really kind of put the put the blueprint on for running trips. It's your little motion and curl route. A little flat route. <laughs> look at this. Look at these routes. I mean, this is good stuff. Got a little flat, little flat ghost route there to the tight end. Let's see what he goes to now. And Kobo, honestly, he might even just be thinking to himself, just get three. I mean, if he just gets three, it puts him in a really he's just in a really good position in this game. He doesn't have to get this is his wide receiver. This is that flat zig. He loves that play. Really, really good play. And then that that's honestly probably one of his true money plays. He's got this little flat, little whip, little dig, and then a little backside flat streak. Really good. These little he just plays these little games with the two man. He plays these little two man games and they're so hard to stop from uh, Astro, especially the way Astro's playing defense here. It's just hard to play defense against this formation when you're in six one. Because honestly, it's just yep. Yeah, this is this is one of his better plays, and he actually kind of got him there. But yeah, that's one of that's one of Kobo's favorite plays right there. That little tight end, tight end on a flat, running back streak, and then that backside flat whip and then dig. That play is so powerful. That's that's one of his favorite plays. Here we go with a basic slant post at tight end. Probably just because Astro's been running a lot more man coverage. That whip route does a good job. Gets open. Kobo gets downfield. And I guess you would want seven here. If you get three, it's really not the end of the world. Let's see what he's got labbed up for the red zone. Goes to pistol trips. Where do you see people running pistol trips? You just don't see that much. Pistol trips, little halfback counter to the right. Not a bad run. Dre Archer scampers upfield for four yards. And that puts him in a, what, a second and six, 39 seconds to... Key here, too, is Astro only has one timeout, so it's going to be really hard for him to get the ball back. So you should see just a run here. This is out of Trey Open, a little halfback base. Love that play call. It's a really good run this year. A lot of people have been sleeping on the Trey Open, or the Trey, I think that was actually Trey, Trey Open offset, and that was 5-6 trap probably. But anywho, yeah, really, really good run. Third and one. See what he goes to. Goes to the speed option. Jurtles with Perry. That looked way more open than it actually was, I guess. And now we get a fourth and one. And this is a decision. Do you kick three here and go up by seven and then potentially 14? Or do you try to go up seven and put the game away? I mean, if he gets seven here, really, does, he can still go up two scores out of half. So I think that's why he ends up going for this. And he goes back to speed option. And this just literally... This just puts him in a really good position to win this game. He actually flips it, goes with the journal, gets in for six. And that is, that's the first half. A lot happened in the first half, but really at the end of the day, that was huge. All right, so let's come back out here. Let's see. So Kobo gets ball at a half. Kind of interesting to watch his strategy. So Astro actually onside kicks. Because he's in such a bad position here, down 21 to 10 without ball in the second half. So he gives ball 
gives Kobo the ball at midfield. Now, Kobo's objective here probably is just to take as much time off the clock as possible because he is up two scores. So he just wants to try to get the game over with as quickly as possible. So probably should be running the ball or running these. I mean, you see here again, this is this is his play. You got the flat, you got the running back streak, this old zig. And look at look at just all of the all the space open to be able to throw stuff. Throws that really nice little deep uh, deep in route. And I think he's doing that out of the play cross under because it has a little bit of a deeper in route than the other play. See if he goes back to it here again. I mean, Asher really hasn't been able to stop the play. Three three fifty five on the clock. Let's take a look at the route combo. A little different. I just don't like how he can use her both the crosser and the drag at the same time on that route combo. Second and 15. Ball on about the 23-yard line goes to tight. Some kind of tight set here. Kind of just throws some Mickey Mouse. Not Mickey Mouse, but just kind of, I don't know. Tight, was that tight flex? Tight flex. Not a bad formation. There's a lot of cool plays in this playbook, actually. Running gun might be a really good move. Does the split flex here with the power. Oh, he's got a lot of these little just, just kind of natty type of plays. Goes the power O. Oh, it's about to the four. He it is cool watching Kobo play in the red zone. Kobo always just does some stuff that people just he just finds these little he sees little nuances in his in his scheme. Go split flex, gonna run, goes cross, got two fades on the left side, two drags. What's he looking for here? I don't know, but he got screamed at. Third and goal. And really, this is where 6-1 was really, I mean, it's it's really good in the red zone. So it's hard to score on the red zone in this. Here he's back in that tray open. Let's see if he goes with the little running back ghost route. Or motion, motion over flat route. What's he doing with this? He's got a flat route. He's got the post. And ends up getting sacked. And that's going to do it. That's the um, first drive out of half. Fourth and goal. Going to take his three. So he's up 14. So kind of in the same situation we thought he'd be in a little bit. And now we're going to see Astro try to fight back. How does Astro fight back? Can he get back into the game? What's the combos we're running? Obviously, he's going to be in a be interesting to watch some of the defense here. Kobo actually changes up his defense a little bit too. He goes to kind of the new way people. A lot of people have been running this free safety zone blitz, where they let this safety come down. And it's really what the good part about this blitz is. It's really good at containing the quarterback. So you see here, you're going to get a contain, so it keeps him in the pocket. And it really the whole purpose of the defense here is to try to prevent the big play. That's what Kobo is trying to do. He's trying to prevent the big play, keep C.J. Stroud in the pocket, don't let him get out, try to make a lot of plays happen. But here in a third and two, he does go back to his spinner defense, which is his main defense for Bunch. And you see, it's just bagging. I mean, this is really good defense. Ooh! That probably should have been worked. It probably should have been worked. Here you see there's the trips audible again. Let's see what we get. C route to the left. Tight throw, crosser, open, good read, and great job by Astro. Just getting out of bounds to kind of keep the clock. Because Astro is trying to extend the game. He's trying to save as much clock as possible. So you should see him also try to, you know, be very intentional with his clock management here. Verticals, wheels open, don't hit, don't hit the read. And now everything's bagged. So kind of just a misread there, but is able to get out of there with Stroud. Get down for a first and goal situation. RPO bubble time. This is red zone. We're going to go to this. Actually, probably had that. Had that. Really good. Able to get down there and get seven quick, which is what he needed to do. So now we're 24-17. We got one quarter left. So now, if Astro gets a stop, he's right back in the game. If Astro gets a stop, he's right back in the game. He did kind of what he needed to do. He held the three. So let's see here. This is a big drive for Kobo. This is a put-away drive. Gets it to the fourth. Second and nine situation. And we're going to go back to the bomb here. This is his bomb play. Texas route. Missed re or uh, doesn't catch it. So third and nine. This is, a, this is the biggest play of the game so far. 
Biggest play of the game for Astro. This is his this is his chance to get back in the game right here. We'll see what Kobo runs. PA slot corner with a little short corner to the right. Running back streak. That's a combo. That was a big gotta have it moment. Kobo able to dot up. And now we're gonna see back to this some of this stuff here. A little jet touch pass at a bunch tight in, I think, is what we're gonna see. Maybe a zone zone run left. Three seconds, two seconds. Yep, jet sweep. Not able to hit the not able to hit it. Second and ten. Back to the pass. PA slot corner. Actually gonna go back to that cross under. So here's the play. This should be flat zig. Yeah. Let's see if he runs it. Nope. Different combo here. And these are just kind of some interesting route. I don't know about some of these combos. <laughs> I feel like some of these plays. Oh, okay. I didn't I didn't know that. So they've been trying to hit maybe a bomb. Astro almost able to get something. And now again, we're in a third down situation. This is a gotta have it down for Kobo. This is a got to have it down for Astro. Let's see what Kobo calls. Going to go post, post? Or no, 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 no. Slant post. Slant. Ooh, okay, here we go. Fourth and ten. Here we go. All right, this is a key. This is, this is by far the biggest play of the game now. We get a motioned over running back. So Astro sends the crib. This guy's in a cloud. I think this guy's in the middle third. It's a yellow zone. This is not bad defense. I don't know what Kobo ran. We got to throw that, I guess. That's a tight. You got big Harold Carmichael right underneath you. Throws the tight end. Oh, it's a curl to the tight end. Dang. Dang. <laughs> Dude, that's a big-time read. That's a big-time read right there. That was good defense by Astro. And Kobo just, boom. All right, first and ten. This is, this is, Astro has definitely clutched up a little bit on this drive and played some good defense. A little counter run. And, and now we're in, now we're in put away. Yep, yep, yep. Now we're in full clock mode. He's in field goal range, so you're going to see... Him run this run this clock down and then try to take three, go up two possessions. And I bet you at, he's just trying to take the, the clock. Second and 13, if he's going to pass here, he's going to pass at this second and 13 situation. This post, post. This has got to be post slant. What is this? Post drag, yeah. Little comeback route on the left. Drag, throw away. I guess he's. I guess he called that because he was thinking he could maybe get it under under two minutes. Now you definitely pass here because you got a two minute warning. Um. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man. And now you now you're running the ball. You take timeouts. You go up two possessions. Yeah, we're in wildcat. Why wouldn't we be? We're in jet sweep in an MCS game. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you run Wildcat? Dude, Kobo definitely has some crazy plays. He's out here running all kinds of weird stuff. Halfback zone week. This is one of his favorite plays. It's a good run against 6-1. It's a good run. I struggled to stop it. I played somebody the other day running that. A slot. It's going to be stretch probably. Stretch left. Cut back. Seven. And that. Pretty much it. We'll see what uh, Astro dials up on offense, but buck fifty, and I think Astro. Let's see, I mean, you gotta get the way onside kicks are though this year. There's always a chance. Corner. Whoa. Okay, that must have been a block and release drag route. Notice the defense from uh, Kobo is this right here with the contains on the outside. You see, just trying to keep him in the pocket, take away the big play, and Astro's able to hit a big play. Yeah, Astro low-key, his two-minute offense is, <laughs> is, is often, I mean, I guess Kobo's playing defense a little differently, too, so you got to remember that, but, oh, it's a fade. So the fade, watch the fade pull the third. This is, like, great offense, what people don't realize. So th the fade on the wide side of the field can pull those outside thirds. 
that's where you have to quarter. I'm pretty sure. So we got wheel, streak. Where's he looking here? Good read. This is a good drive. It's a good drive by Astro. You got to give Astro's offense credit. It, it certainly came to play in the second half. The first half was terrible. And I honestly feel like it was really that missed uh, streak. That streak was a touchdown. And he underthrew it. And that just completely changed the game. Here we go. Onside kick for the bread. Going to be usering George Kittle. But let's it go out of bounds. And that is... Oh, we're throwing the ball? Why are we throwing the ball? I don't know what Kobo's doing. See, Kobo does this sometimes where in these big games, not even just these big games, just in general, sometimes he does stuff and it's like he overthinks it. I guess it's because he doesn't want to give Ash Astro the ball back or he's trying to get in field goal range. I don't know. But you don't have to do too much to get in field goal range here. You just need a yard or two, I think. I want to say it's the 42. Yeah, I think you're in field goal range here. This QB sneak. Third and five. I'm out. Give himself a good play call here on third and five. Yep, QB sneak. Take your field goal. All right, I'm good with that. And then that's going to take us down to a couple seconds. And that's pretty much it. Two possession lead. 20 seconds. A lot can be learned from this one. This is going to be one we got to go back and relook at some of the defensive adjustments, some of the other things. I mean, this was this was a defensive masterclass by Kobo until really the second half where he significantly changed the defense strategy, and I don't know that it worked. <laughs> the defense he played in the first half was absolutely incredible. Let's see the little DB fire. Get up the field, jurtle out. Dude, Astro's got some plays, man. Astro's got some plays. Get your three. Try to give yourself one more shot at a Hail Mary. And Kobo's going to get it done. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to get my full ebooks, all that stuff is at the Patreon, patreon.com slash Cody Ballard. Link is in the description below.